Hello, everyone. Welcome to Enjoy the Book of Life. Today, we are going to have a resource review. We're back with Ian. Ian, what is our resource that we're looking at today? Uh, so we're going to be talking about um, how to start up a Bible study and you know, what that looks like, just kind of some practical tips on that. Um, yeah. So my oh. first my first question, <clears throat> why? Why bother? I mean, it sounds like this is going to be a lot of work. Why would you even, why would someone consider doing this? Yeah, so this kind of uh, goes back to our previous topic. We talked about um, having an eternal perspective. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't watched our video, go back and watch it. And, um, but yeah, there, so in that video, we kind of talked about how um, there's two things that are going to last forever in this life. Uh, it's the word of God is number one and number two are people, right? Mm -hmm. Eternal souls, eternal beings. And <clears throat> so as far as the, why, why would you do a Bible study? It's because of that, because mm -hmm. we've got God's word that's going to last forever. And the way you feed eternal beings is with God's eternal word, right? His food. Um, I think just, so <laughs> I guess if you were to put it like a broad perspective on it, um, looking at it that way, but, um, I think one big thing too, like in our world today, it's interesting because we have never had so much information at our fingertips, mm -hmm. but I feel like we've also never had so much, so much to push through in order to get to the truth. Yeah. Right whether it's, whether it's lies, whether it's just uh, like so much information, we just, we lose sight of, you know, the facts. Um, like there's just, there's just so much out there that we have to weed through in order to narrow down to the truth. And I think young people especially are just hungry for truth. Like there's so much being thrown at them so much, um, perspective so much like you got to think this way or you got to do this or that and and young people are just hungry for for truth like just mm. tell me straight up like <laughs> how am i supposed to think how am i supposed to act what am i supposed to believe and you're not gonna you're not gonna find that outside of god's word mm. um so you think about like man like how can i have an impact on people today um the truth, right? God's word, yeah. just simply that, like share the truth with them. And I, yeah, I think people are hungry for that. Oh yeah. I, I definitely agree. I, I think that's a need that isn't necessarily expressed, right? No one walks around and say, Hey, can you tell me some truth? Right. It, it's it's almost as if uh, it's it's a non-conscious thing. Right. That 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 there's that desire. All right. Or mm -hmm. or maybe they don't even recognize that. But when I spend time in the word and I like a truth is shown to me by the spirit in my own study time, it is it's like I just ate a well, you know, a well-prepared meal. And it's so <laughs> satisfying. And mm -hmm. And I think having that with uh, is is exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what are the benefits? We, we you you mentioned that one. Um, what other benefits have you seen in in home Bible studies or or Bible studies that you've started up? Just kind of start us off on this. You know, some some listeners might still be like, well, I'm not sure if, if this is something <laughs> I'm interested in. What are some other benefits that you've seen just from your own personal experience? Yeah, um, I would say just the fellowship time. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you talk about something people are starving for, especially after the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is is fellowship, right? Like face to face talking with people, um, hanging out, playing games together. Um, like that is, that is so important to our, our Christian lives. Um, and, and, you know, you don't, 
I don't know, you don't have to have like a specific spot, but sometimes it's nice to, you know, have a, have a place to be able to do that. Like, like a home where yeah. things can be a little bit more casual and laid back and people feel welcome to come and go. And, um, so, yeah, so I just fellowship, um, I've seen huge benefits from that. Uh, I think just like people's personal study time. Um, I know there's been several people in, in some of the studies I've been a part of where they have grown and in turn, they've learned to feed themselves mm -hmm. and have deeper and more quality times with the Lord in their own like personal time with the Lord. Um, I mean, <laughs> you can't put a price on, on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. learning or teaching people how to how to feed themselves and how to dig into the word and understand it and grow from it and obey it um so yeah those those are key things uh, just the encouragement again <laughs> we need a lot of encouragement today um again and thinking um primarily thinking of young people but i mean any age really um but again young people are are faced with a lot today yeah. And uh, there's a lot of things like when I was growing up, <clears throat> it's weird to say I'm not that yeah. old, but <laughs> it seems like you know, life in our world has just changed so much. And so yeah. quickly, like when I was growing up, there are things that people are talking about today to, you know, 10, nine, eight year olds that I didn't even know existed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So people, young people today are hearing and learning things at a much younger age then I, you know, I'm, I'm still learning some of these things as, as an adult. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's discouraging. Um, and it's, yeah, it's hard. And so I think just, yeah, having a place to encourage young people, um, through, through the word of God, through fellowship and, you know, just, yeah, encouraging them, sharing the gospel with young people. Um, so that would be another, um, it could be a, an evangelistic Bible study where mm -hmm. your whole goal is to share the gospel with people. Um, you have some, some neighbors or, or people, you know, who aren't saved, but are interested in studying the Bible. Like that would be a huge benefit of, yeah. of having a Bible study as well. So what are your top tips? Okay. So again, <laughs> this seems pretty broad open. Give us some direction. <clears throat> where are we headed? What are we thinking? Again, Sunday school answer, pray. <laughs> yeah. Pray, pray about it. Right. Um, I think part of, part of the prayer is maybe you're hearing this and you're like, nah, I'm not really interested. So part of the prayer might be like, yeah, I see that this is a important thing and needful. I don't feel like I can really do it. And so just pray like, Lord, if this is something you want me to do, you know, work in my heart, my life, give me the desire to, to start something up like this. Um, if you do have the desire and you're like, yeah, let's do this. Uh, pray again, pray yeah. like, Lord, where, like, how do you want this to look? What should I do? Who's my like target group of people? Um, where are the needs? Like yeah. the Lord, the Lord knows where all the needs are. And so just ask the Lord, like point out the, point out the people in need point out, you know, maybe there's, um, a specific group, maybe, maybe there's a specific, uh, topic that is being missed or, um, you know, just ask the Lord, Lord, show me, show me where the needs are. Um, if this is something, you know, something you want me to do. Um, I, I, well, first I, I like the, the two options you gave there, you know, if you're not interested, maybe it is something the Lord has for you, right? Like Moses, Moses wasn't interested in being, you know, the great <laughs> savior of the people, right. But God had other plans and, and they were the right plans, Right. Yeah. Um, but then also it's like, no, I feel I'm motivated. I got this right. It's like, no, hang on. You need to pray <laughs> about this. Right. Because again, that's, that's the double side of the coin, right? I'm underconfident. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a problem because I've got God with me. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm overconfident. It's like, well, that's a problem, right? You need <laughs> God, right? right? And in both yeah. situations, right. It's like, I have God on my side, but I need God on my side. And mm -hmm. so no matter what the situation you, mm -hmm. we have to pray. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a good first point, um, for direction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and two, like you, you don't want to start something in your own strength. Um, yeah. right. Uh, 
um, verse in Psalms, it's the Lord who builds the house. <laughs> yes. It's really, really bad. Um, but just that, Un- unless, yeah. unless the Lord, the Lord builds the house, those who labor, labor in vain, labor in vain. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, unless the Lord builds a house, those who labor, labor in vain. And so like having a Bible study is a really awesome idea. It's good. Like you should do it, but also don't do it in your own strength because, yeah. um, that doesn't result in, in fruit and, and what you, what you really want. Um, if you're, if you're looking to the Lord, you're seeking his guidance. Um, that's where the fruit of, of the study will come, um, is in, is in the Lord's work and the Lord bringing pe- the people that he wants and, uh, ministering to the people that he, he brings there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, <clears throat> I think it's good to think, you know, w- when we say Bible study, because everyone might get a different picture in their head. If I'm mm-hmm. meeting with someone to discuss the scriptures with them, that's a Bible study, right? Um, there was a time where you and me and Christian and another friend, uh, Deshundrick, we all met on Zoom Saturday mornings, and we would just talk, talk about things going on in our lives. We'd all share things that we had gotten from the word. I mean, that that's a Bible study. I, I found, mm-hmm. you know, things like that can be hugely encouraging, where all you have to say is, hey, do you want to study a book? And every Saturday, we'll talk about what we learned, right? Like this week, we'll study the first chapter. Saturday, we'll go get coffee and just chat about it, right? We'll mm-hmm. chat about other things, but we'll we'll make a point to start with that and chat about it. And so I think, I think that's a good Bible study, you know? And, and so sometimes we overthink it and we say, okay, I need this big house and this, these big events and a super duper plan. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think it can be as simple as that. I think it can be big. Right. And I, I think, you know, those yeah. are good studies too, but I, yep. I think we need to broaden our ideas of what it means to quote unquote, start a Bible study. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, <laughs> It comes in all shapes and sizes and, and uh, yeah, like you said, big groups, one-on-one um, and like, yeah, you don't have to have a house. I mean, the world is building Bible study homes, right? Coffee shops. That's what yeah. coffee shops are. That's right. <laughs> that's the, that's the go-to Bible study place. <laughs> yeah. So you don't, you don't even have to have your own home. You can, you can just meet, you know, if it's one-on-one, you can meet with a couple people, you know, I've done that, you know, at coffee shops. And it's a, yeah, it's a great place to, um, have a, have a Bible study and, uh, invest in people. Other tips. So, uh, yeah, I would say, <clears throat> um, you know, prayer, um, kind of along the same lines as just praying like, yeah, for the, the people you want there, um, kind of like who's the Lord laying on your heart. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your, what's your target audience? Um, and I think again, it's very practical as far as don't, don't think about like, you know, overseas, like I'm going to start a Bible study, but like who, who is the Lord put your, put in your life today? Yeah. Um, like what people are around you that could use encouragement or use fellowship um, or just use some basic training on like Bible study skills. And, um, I think one thing important to remember is like, you don't have to have all the answers. Yeah. Um, I don't have all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, nobody has all the answers. The Lord has the answers, but nobody has all the answers. Yeah. And like, don't let that discourage you from like pouring in into somebody younger than you or or someone who maybe is, you know, a couple steps behind you spiritually. Yeah. Um, again, it's, it's not, it's not a big deal not to have all the answers. Um, and that can actually be a way to encourage more study. It's like, Oh yeah, that's a good question. Like let's study that, you know, yeah. <laughs> let's look, look at more scriptures and try to try to figure out the answer to that. So yeah, a lot of people, because we're in that information rich age, everyone's ready to just Google the answer. <laughs> right and it's like no hang on we'll study it out and yeah. and we'll see you know and i i like that promoting it 
to a, a future study. I think along the lines with um, a target audience are clearly defined goals. So mm -hmm. like I said, with I'll study, we'll, we'll study the first chapter and then we'll meet, have coffee and discuss it. I think that's clearly defined and that's a con thing you can do consistently. Well, uh, in the study that we had here in Mississippi, we had the goals to move through a book mm -hmm. as well as teach basic Bible study methods. And that was it. We did the same, roughly the same. I did a little experimenting, but <laughs> ru roughly the same, you know, standard format, right? Everyone yeah. who came basically knew what they were going to get. And, and so that same, uh, you know, that clearly defined goals, I think, really helps. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> one thing too, uh, again, just kind of going back to like your desire, like uh, maybe I could see myself doing a study or like, uh, I can't really see that. Um, and just, you know, one thing you can pray, and this has happened to me a couple of times where it's like, Lord, if you want me to have a study with somebody or whatever, just you bring them into my life and have them ask me, you know, and that's, yeah. that's happened. Like, you know, a couple of times where a, a young guy will be like, Hey, do you want to meet up you know, once a week or something like that. And that's another thing too, like time, time wise, just more of a practical tip. Like, um, you know, study doesn't have to be, you know, every day or, or once a week, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, there's weekly Bible studies I've been a part of. There's uh, monthly studies I've been a part of sometimes meeting with people like every other week. Um, so it, like, Sometimes we kind of have this idea when we think about starting up a Bible study, it's like this huge commitment and, you yeah. know, our life is just going to be consumed by Bible study. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it's, it's not, you know, like it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a once a week thing. Like it can, a lot of times it can't be just because, you know, people's schedules and whoever you're working with, um, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So we, we started up a study here recently and our, our goal and our idea behind it was to, um, get youth from kind of around the, uh, we're, we're in the Minneapolis area and there's a lot of youth and it's all spread out. Like I can travel, we're up in the Northern part of the suburbs and I can travel about 45 minutes South and still be in the suburbs of, yeah. of Minneapolis, you know? So it's, it's a pretty big spread out area. Um, and we just thought like, if we, if we did a weekly study, it'd be hard for people that live, you know, half an hour to 45 minutes away to commit every week. And so we were just like, well, let's just do once a month. And that way, mm. you know, if people want to come, it's not like this huge commitment where I got to travel once a week, you know, yep. hour and a half both ways. Right. Right. So think about, yeah. Think about like just logistical things too. Um, when you're, when you're th thinking through the study, like, you know, what's, what's practical, what's going to be the easiest. Cause if, let's be honest. If, <laughs> If, uh, if we want to come up with excuses not to come, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with them pretty easily, you know? Yes, so yes, try to make it practical. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was one of the reasons <clears throat> I, I refused to give homework at, with the study. <laughs> There's a lot of studies I've been to and they give homework. And the, the issue is you remember about the study an hour before the study. <laughs> and then you remember <laughs> I didn't do the homework. And so it's like this trigger. Oh, I should go to the study. Oh, wait, I didn't do the homework. Right. And it, it, it's it's like one more reason not to go. And I yeah. didn't want to ever give a reason not to go. Now, some people, they do it and it works great. And, and that's great. I just found it as an impediment, uh, the idea of home, mm. homework. On the flip side of that, I think there should be ownership mm -hmm. by all the participants. So when you get there, it's not one person presenting, but everyone's owning in the study at, mm -hmm. to some extent through, through engagement. And so engage them with ownership of the study. I remember mm -hmm. whenever we get to the end of a book, I'd be like, all right, guys, we got a week or two. We, I need to hear some suggestions. Where are we going next? Right. And, you know, they, they took us to some strange places, right? You're non-typical. You know, we studied through the book of Nehemiah and 
some tough books. They won Romans and Hebrews and, and, you know, that's great, but it, they were willing to trek through those sections because mm -hmm. they were the ones that had suggested it and, and wanted it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I am uh, doing a Bible study with some of the young guys from, from work. Um, we meet once a, once a week in the morning. Actually, this, this idea came from um, you. you uh, there's an older gentleman back in Michigan who used to meet early in the mornings for study. Yeah. And he'd pay for everyone's breakfast. I don't pay for people's breakfast. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've got diapers to pay for. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah right. that's right. Um, but anyway, I got, yeah, I had this idea from, from that. <clears throat> and so I just, yeah, suggested with the young guys, like, hey, let's meet, you know, once a week. And they're all, I would say, pretty um, firm believers. So our, my goal in starting the study was just a, a way to encourage each other, pray for each other. And just spend time like fellowshipping in the word. Um, mm -hmm. Like most of these guys have pretty strong walks with the Lord. So, um, but yeah, we, we, uh, it's a very casual setting. We just, we're, we've going through, we started going through Proverbs. And then after that, we're like, well, what do we go through? And we, we literally, each guy picked out two books of the Bible. And there's like websites or apps where you can like enter in oh, yeah. information or yep. whatever and it like spins a random wheel. All right. And that's how we, that's how we pick like the next book we we're going to study, right? We all have our two books that we want to go through and we'll do a random draw and, and, well, looks like we're going to do Romans or, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so sometimes, yeah. I mean, again, what's your, what's your target audience? What's your goal for the study? Uh, what are the needs, right? For these mm -hmm. guys at work, it's like, well, I want, like, for me, the need was like, these guys need someone maybe a little bit older than them. A little bit farther along in life to encourage them and just to fellowship with them and to pray for them and just have a time where it's like let's just meet together be in the word and uh, keep each other accountable um so yeah so it's again comes back to that um that needs based <laughs> study yeah. a little bit where yeah what are what are the needs around me so now let's go to the other side what are the challenges? What are some speed bumps <laughs> along the way? And how have you dealt with those? Uh, yeah, lots of challenges. No, no, Bible study is all good. There's no challenges. Yeah. You just go, <laughs> go out and start a study, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, there, uh, some, of the, some of the things we've already been talking about, like logistical challenges, mm -hmm. um, where you've got, people that are maybe living far away. Um, cause that, that's hard because sometimes you're in an area I've, I've lived in certain areas where, um, you have believers that live, you know, an hour away and they don't have like a, they don't have like a home church. Like they travel a long ways just to go to church. Right. Mm. And they don't have a lot of fellowship or a lot of encouragement outside of, you know, their one hour drive to Sunday, uh, to church every Sunday. Right outside of that, like they have nothing really. Mm. Um, so that can be a challenge, like, um, just, just travel logistics. Yeah. Um, I would say one pretty big challenge is interest. Um, again, we're, we're fighting, uh, a lot of information <laughs> Yeah. where someone's like, well, I don't, you know, I don't need to go to study. I can just listen to this preacher online or, um, you know, I, I got my fellowship that way. Right. Um, or they just, you know, they look up answers on Google or they don't think they need fellowship or whatever. And so one big challenge is like building up the interests. Like why <laughs> a lot of times you have to convince people like why this is important, why you, why you need to come. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. um, that can be difficult, um, to, to do. And again, you don't want to put a lot of stock in you building up the interest, right? Again, mm -hmm. and that's why we started off by talking about like how important it is to be praying about it and asking the Lord to draw people to the study. If, if, you know, if this is, if this is what the Lord wants me to do, like, Lord, you draw the people. Aside. I don't want, I don't want them to come because of me, because yeah. I don't have the answers. You've got the answers. You have what they need. So you need to fill me up so I can, 
I can give them what they need. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you, so that, yeah, that can be a challenge. Just, just keeping interest, drawing interest in, in the study. Um, yeah. Um, I think preparation time too, like mm -hmm. it's, it is a commitment. Um, and it's not something you want to do half-heartedly. Um, and that can be, that can, that can be a big challenge. <laughs> the, the study we had here, we started it when I was going to Mississippi state, but it continued into while I was teaching and my first year teaching. I mean, that was, I mean, that's oh. rough for any, any teacher. I would come home. We, we did the study Friday night. So this was after full week of teaching. I would, there were a few times where I would be woken up like, Dave, they're showing up like you, you gotta wake up. <laughs> it's, it's time for the study. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You wipe the sleep <laughs> out of my, my eyes. It's like, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, sometimes it, preparation, it, it's it. It can be challenging, especially with that time. But again, you in the last talk, we talked about Epaphras, you know, this idea of pouring yourself out for others. And, mm. um, you know, I think I think if I need to stay up a little later than usual so that mm -hmm. so that I'm I am prepared, I, I think that's that's well worth it. I think one yeah. of the challenges we have here, because um, one of our target audiences is the university. Every four years, the population is different, right? Yeah. And like, shoo, 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 shoo. and so <laughs> that, that's a challenge. And if you're not on campus, you don't have those connections and it, it is challenging that way. So you're talking about distance, right? Whereas mm -hmm. all those sorts of other logistical things come into play or, or you just start and someone has to move or, you know, all those yeah. sorts of dynamics. One of the things in the Bible study that I, I was most fearful of was um, people pushing their own agenda. I thought, OK, I'm going to get into this Bible study and someone's going to sit there and they're going to pop up with some heresy. Right. And then they're going to start swaying the crowd and doing all this sort of thing. And that troubled me. We would I mean, we we were going through some challenging books with a lot of hot topic issues in them and um i remember i would study and study those sections and all the ins and outs and i would labor in prayer over this and then i'd show up and we'd do the study and no one even brought it up <laughs> you know? so i mean that to say you know you can trust the lord now there was one time where i feel like it was it was going a direction and i just said in that situation i said this is a controversial topic i think just so we don't derail the rest of the conversation let's save it and then we'll chat about this afterwards after the study mm -hmm. and then it was fine i mean we didn't even they they didn't even bring it up after the rest of the study and so just having something like that tucked away um, mm -hmm. But it, it it is, I think it's important to think about that ahead. But again, 99% of those worries I had, they, they never, they never popped up. No yeah. one made an issue of them. Yeah. And a lot of times, like, I, yeah, I've been in studies where, um, yeah, you definitely, you get people that kind of have an agenda or, you know, their own opinion about stuff. Um, and it's, it, I guess one Another pointer is um, when you first start your Bible study, you definitely make it known like we look at scripture as the authority and yeah. you can state your opinion, but we're always going to go back to scripture and, you know, your opinion will be judged by scripture. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, also I... just like what you were saying, like um, sometimes sometimes when you engage that too, it, it, it really does derail the study and kind of sometimes it leaves a bad flavor in, in people's mouths. Yeah. And, and so just kind of like, you know, not, not addressing maybe some of the, the things that are um, extra biblical or, or anti-biblical, whatever they might be yeah. right there on the spot, but saying like, let's, let's put that aside. Um, we'll address it later. You know, let's like, you know, keep going here. 
Um, and you just kind of, you move on that way. Yeah. And, and then you, you go to the person, you know, in private or, you know, one-on-one -on -one and then you talk through it and, and, you know, and if, and if it becomes a, a, a big deal where it's like every week or, you know, they keep bringing it up and yeah. it's like, at that point you can just say, Hey, you know, just so you know, this isn't the general belief here. Like, and this is why, because of, you know, these verses and this is what we believe. So, um, and you can address it at that point you know, with, yeah. with the person. And, yeah. Uh, I think I don't, you, you, men you mentioned uh, when people start going off into their opinions, I, I, my little phrase that I like to anchor at was, well, what verse are you thinking of? Yes. Right. So they start talking, Oh, what, what verse are you talking about? They, you know, you know, as we're going through Romans four, Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> and it, 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 it's just a nice little reminder <clears throat> This is what mm -hmm. we're talking about. And, you know, people have opinions. I have opinions, you know, mm -hmm. but when we're in the Bible study, let's talk about the Bible. You know, let's study that. Yeah. yeah I was going to, I was just going to say like, yeah, we've, we've all been there where it's like, we go off on some rabbit trail and <laughs> you're like, look back and you're like, wait, where, how did I get to yeah. there? Like yeah. from here, <laughs> like, okay, focus, <laughs> like get back on topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. Any other challenges or uh, tips for someone thinking about launching into it from either side? Yeah, um, for me, I tend to be pretty, uh, uh, I'm, well, not in all areas, but in some areas I'm like over analytical sometimes and I'm like, oh, I got to make sure everything, you know, fits and, you know, this is the perfect setting and all that. And so my encouragement for other people like that that are like me is just, just do it. Like <laughs> stop overanalyzing stuff to death, you know, like just, just do it, like get going. Um, mm -hmm. again, uh, going back to our other topic about having the eternal perspective, like, uh, this, this world is not getting any better. And, um, there's, there are people dying all around us out there. Like there, there's no, no time to, you know, be like Moses and be like, uh, you know, like I don't have the words or I don't, you know, I don't know if I have the right home or the right setting or this or that. Like, no, you got a Bible, you got the Holy spirit living inside of you. Like the Lord wants to use you to invest in people. Like, so just, just do it. Like reach out to people, um, see what their needs are and, and come alongside them and say, Hey, let's, let's meet, let's talk about this or, you know, invite people over to your house or, yeah. Meet up with them for coffee. Like just, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't wait for the right moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was just to kind of add to that. There was a little challenging bit for me. Uh, I had the study several years here and then it just kind of started to dwindle. Right. And we got fewer, fewer. Right. And then eventually it got to the point where we stopped meeting. And mm. this was, this was, a, a, a challenge for me because I I'm there saying, okay, is this something I need to push, push through? Right. Mm -hmm. Or is the Lord telling me I need to stop? Well, this was coming right at the time of me getting married. And then shortly after having starting to have children. Mm -hmm. And so it was right shortly after I become a husband and father and then we have three three boys now and uh, I believe that the Lord was pulling me away from a heavier commitment to mm. focus on becoming a husband and a father now that being said I picked up in that time smaller more casual bible studies um, mm -hmm. that I had with other people. And again, more like these little one-on-ones, we'd meet up, we'd chat, highly encouraging. And I think they, they are very encouraging. And, and to start talking through some truth with someone and just light up and see them light up and soon you're feeding off each other. This is one of my favorite things yeah. about this podcast, you know, talking about someone's treasured discovery. It's just so exciting. You know, is like, what do you value more than gold or silver, right? Or like, <laughs> what's an area where you've grown, 
right? It, this is it's so mm-hmm. exciting. And so uh, that's just what one of those areas I, I, in my encouragement, you know, if you don't have that, find mm-hmm. someone to share that with. Uh, you know, you were talking mm-hmm. about doing it with younger people. And I grew up, when I was growing up, there were these older guys that invested in me. And I think mm-hmm. it's good to go both ways, that to find older guys that will invest in you, find younger guys you can invest in and complete mm-hmm. that chain, essentially. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's, <clears throat> and we're we're all in different places in life. Yeah, and um, obviously there's sacrifices that, that are made to, you know, in order to do a Bible study. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like you were saying, uh, there's times where you're more free in life and times when you have three boys and a wife and it's like, ah, <laughs> I have to, I have to limit what I, what I can and, you know, can't do. Um, but even in, you know, even in those moments, like you're, you're investing in people still, right. You're investing in your wife and your, and your sons and, um, and the little time you have left, you know, you're, you're yeah. trying to invest in other, other people. So I, yeah, I think it's just, yeah, again, going back to that perspective, like, you know, start with the people closest to you and, and work out from there, right. Investing in their lives for people who are married. It's like your spouse and your, and your kids. And then, you know, you work out from there, your, your work circles, your church circles, you know, what are, what are the needs and how much time can you, can you invest there and and be involved in their lives? Mm. Yeah, for sure. And I think that right there, we, we had quite a few episodes ago, I was talking with John Mark about time management and he says, hey, if you want to pour into your community, into your church, it's like, well, who are your friends that you hang out with, right? Mm. If it's your church friends, well, then you're multitasking, right? You're having fun and you're fellowshipping. You're enriching each other at the same time. If your core group of friends are totally separate from the people you fellowship with, you know, as part of the body, it's like, well, yep. then yeah, you, you're cutting your time in half, you know, if it, that has to be two separate events. Um, and so, yeah, I think, right. Even though I had, if I, I'm in a season with less time, I'm still spending a lot of time with my wife and kids to pour into. And so yep. you, you get that, that double benefit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would say too, one thing just, um, I actually just listened to that, uh, your talk with John Mark yeah. and, uh, was convicted by <laughs> the whole time management and redeeming the time. But, um, yeah, one thing with just like starting up a study is it is a, it is a major time investment and, um, you know, just doing practical things to, to prepare yourself and, and to, uh, store up that time, um, that you can invest. So, like if I if I want to start a Bible study, <clears throat> uh, that means I can't be you know on my phone for two hours at night scrolling through Facebook, you know every night or Twitter or whatever it is. Like I have to actually you know invest invest time in studying and preparing and and just um, yeah praying about it right. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be yeah like if if there's people out there like man I would love to start a study. Um, and like, I see the needs, like there's a group of young people or whoever in my life that could really use a study, but I just don't know if I have any time. It's like, well, um, just do a, you know, we all have, or I guess I don't know if we all have this, but on my phone, I've got a, every week it sends me like my screen time. Right. And, uh, it's, it's, it's convicting sometimes. Yeah. It's like, how in the world did I spend three hours a day on my phone? Like, there's no way that's possible. <laughs> But, and, but I think of it like three hours a day on my phone. It's like, what could I have been doing in that time? Other than, you know, I was, you know, scrolling through the black hole of YouTube videos or, you know, whatever it is. And um, so that's like, that's super convicting. So just, you know, um, take a, take an inventory of your time in your life. Like what am, what am I spending my time on now that I could cut out and invest in doing a Bible study with people? Because mm-hmm. it, it is a it's a time commitment for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, good. Uh, highly encouraging 
ministry once you're in mm -hmm. it, right? Because you're mm -hmm. you're with pe the people, uh, or yeah, you're with people enjoying fellowship, or you're reaching out to the lost. Your um, which both are works of God, and mm -hmm. you're with the Word of God, and. I, I think I think it just compounds. You know, the longer mm -hmm. you do it, the more exciting it gets. Yeah, yeah, and it's helpful just to think like think think about studies that you were invited to or that you have been a part of. Not that you led, but that you went to. Yeah. And <clears throat> maybe some people have had bad experiences. I'm I tend to be a people person, so I'm I'm wherever there's a party, I want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. But just looking back and thinking about the times that, you know, I was involved in this study or that study and, and the encouragement, the teaching that I received, the fellowship, the encouragement, you know, sometimes, sometimes I was a part of studies and the teaching wasn't that great, but the fellowship and the encouragement was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I've been a part of studies where the teaching is amazing and uh, just grew a lot in, in that way. Right. So, um, yeah, just, yeah, think through think through people's homes that you've been to and people that have poured into your life. And, and, and now, you know, think about how you could have that same impact in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And the thing is we're, um, you probably have heard the saying a lot, but like, you know, no one, no one's an Island, right? We, we need each other and we need that constant encouragement and, oh, uh, yeah. Just, just a person to come alongside, put put your arm around them or them their arm around you, and just say, you know what, <laughs> it's okay, you know, we'll, you know, you'll make it because of the Lord, <laughs> yeah. and uh, just to encourage them, right? Like, and to challenge them, and and uh, yeah, that's so so vital. <laughs> yeah, oh, and that's man. that's part of that's really like if you're to like zero down in on what a Bible study is, that's really that's really what it is is you're just putting your arms around one or maybe it's 20 people and saying, look at what the Lord thinks about us, you know, from this passage or, or look at what the Lord's doing in our lives um, or look at what the Lord instructs us to do, or look at what the Lord rebukes us for, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just like, let's, let's learn this together and, and encourage each other and, and seek to follow the Lord and obey him in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it can be that simple. We talked about having um, those clearly defined goals and, mm -hmm. you know, again, we're in the information age. We have hundreds, we have thousands of years of books written about the Bible. And sometimes people feel like if I'm going to lead a Bible study, I need to be able to quote from, you know, all these guys from all these years ago. It's like, no, you just need to open it and you need to read it and pray through it and study it. And, you know, the same teacher who taught all those men lives inside you if you're a believer mm. and mm -hmm. and just stick with that. And there's more than enough truth, you know, for for you just to read and to glean from in, in your study. You don't need to get an exhaustive knowledge of whatever book you're studying. You know, the, the Lord will reveal the truth to you as you go along the way. <laughs>